Hi, Sarai. Hi, good morning there. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on the film. Uh, can you tell me how did you land the role? Ah, uh, interesting story. Uh, Bianca Balbuena, one of the uh, the co-producers of the film, um, asked me to audition. Uh, it was in the middle of the, it was the height of the pandemic. There were no vaccines yet and everything. So we were all locked inside the house. And I didn't have a job at that time because you know it, it affected the the film and tv industry so much um but interestingly enough the week before i got the invite i was looking at youtube videos of ava green in the series penny dreadful because there was this one scene that was just really beautifully done by her um and i was geeking out on it with my friends uh, look at what she did look at how she did it Etc. And then the week after, I got I got the invite. But at that time, I didn't know that Ava was playing the the other characters. I'm like, I don't have a job. Of course, I'm going to audition. Um, I did a I I did an audition video. Um, my friend from Iligan was reading with me online, and then um the next day I had more questions about the character, so I asked. Bianca more information about like who who my character was, where she's from, how old she is, etc. etc. And then she reveals to me that Ava was playing um the other character in the script that I was given. So panic attack. <laughs> panic attack. I didn't because of that, because I was so nervous, I didn't finish my audition videos up until like five in the morning. My boyfriend and my my friend were were up with me the the entire time. Um, but eventually, uh, two about about a couple of weeks later, that I think Bianca's, if I remember correctly, Bianca told me then that, um, I bagged the role. So, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, just to follow up before I ask my qu next question, uh, what scene was that? And what film did you watch of Ava Green? Um, Penny Dreadful. Uh, okay. it was it was it's a series. Yeah. Okay. So you mentioned briefly how you reacted when you learned that you got the role for the first time. But where were you, and how did you get the good news? Um, I was just here at home. Really, I got it. I I think uh, I got it. Or I I can't remember anymore because my memory about it is kind of fuzzy now. Um, this happened in to when late twenty twenty. Um, I think Bia, if I'm not mistaken, Bianca was the one who who um messaged me um on facebook um because she was also trying to set up a meeting between me and lorcan i think she they wanted to see a few more uh, variations of the audition um and so that's when the 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 um collaboration kind of really started the back and forth and the forming of the character um before the shoot happened in uh early 2021 so uh, what are you looking forward to about uh, watching the completed film? He, I'm very nervous. <laughs> I am very, I'm, I'm very nervous about it. Um, but I think it's really just um, like a normal reaction for every film that I do. I normally do get nervous before <laughs> watching the entire thing. But I, but I trust it a lot because I've worked on the character for for like a long time i've collaborated with with the people involved in this project so much that i i uh i feel a little confident i think about what i did with 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 the character i feel confident about uh the story and especially knowing how they how much they researched for it and how much respect they have um for for the culture for our culture uh which is very much involved in the film without giving everything away can you describe your character please start by clarifying if your character is a nanny or a caregiver and where is your character from in the philippines and how does she end up in ireland ah um okay so the film is set in the uk but we shot in ireland um she is uh, it's so hard to describe diana without <laughs> giving out spoilers but she does enter the household as a as a sort of house help slash nanny um and and I think it has already been mentioned in um other uh articles now she's also there to help uh Christine, which is Ava's Ava Green's character, uh through through some of her physical um ailments. 
So she uses folk healing to to do that. Yeah. Yeah, and did you find out from the film's writer, Garrett Chanley, how he came up with the idea of a Filipino uh, help or uh, caregiver in his story? Ah, um, I'm quite... I- I I think they told me, but I I kind of forget now why they why they why they chose uh our um our culture to be uh as part of uh their story. But I do know that it's a commentary on consumerism and fast fashion, and in and, and as a result, um, labor, really. But so so regardless of which country you're from, if you watch the film, you can kind of um understand what the film is trying to comment on because I think it's happening everywhere. <laughs> and what is your own, own relationship to the folk healing traditions and practices in the Philippines? Um, Not very deep, but I did grow up with some of it. Like, um, you know how Filipino parents, when their children get sick, um, we'd be given paracetamol, but at the same time, they'd call the local manghihilot or the <laughs> local mananambal just to make sure that you know, it's not the it's not because of the white lady at the mango tree. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so the, I did experience uh, like the, the 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 ritual things where they would um we, we call it totho. We call it totho. Like they, I think she, I don't know what she was doing because I would sit there and she would just tower over me. She would like do whisper some stuff over my my head over here, and she would rub some stuff, and then uh she would do that. And then I just sit there. I'd, I don't know what the hell she's doing. And then she'd go, okay, your child is just sick. Um, she's just, it's just plain flu. Or she would say, oh, because they were playing somewhere and they disturbed something. Um, so tell your children not to play there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you, know? you know, that kind of stuff. Yes. Just clarify where, where, where in the province, what, which province did you grow up in? Where, where that happened? Where experience um, that? I, I was born and raised in Cagayan de Oro City before I moved to Cebu for, uh, for college and work eventually there. And then I moved here in 2017 in Metro Manila. Okay. Did you have rehearsals first before shooting began? And if so, was that how you first met Eva, Eva Green and Mark Strong? Then I will ask you later how uh, it was working with uh, Eva and Mark. Rehearsals were, were were a little difficult, being that it was uh, the pandemic. So there was a lot of there was a lot of Zoom calling um, and discussion, uh, which is I I like I like that they 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 did that um, because in in some of the films that I've done, we barely have time to to do those kinds of things. Um, normally, I. Th- think they would rehearse but because because of the pandemic um we could only do it on uh, on zoom and plus the discussions um on how we form the characters and the relationships between those characters uh while i was in quarantine in ireland before the shoot because it was a requirement before when you're traveling uh, is when that's when I first met Eva because we did a table read for our um scenes and and some character work with Lorcan. Um uh I first met Mark Strong on set na. Uh, he was oh, I was already uh, on day two, I think, of of the shoot, and he was there for costume fitting palang. So I met uh, the one of the ADs uh brought me over to his trailer because I also kind of wanted to say hi. When I wanted to meet him, I was, was kind of anxious. I've seen some of his uh, work, and for some reason, you know, my 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 focus kind of he 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 attracts focus. You know, who is that character? Who is that actor? And what's his name? So I look him up, and then okay. So every time he shows up in another film, I'm like, e, it's him again. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the same with Ava. It's the same with I. Uh, I have the same feelings with Ava Green. Like every time I see her uh, in in any of their work, I'm like. Yes, <laughs> hello. I like to watch this, um, but yeah, that's that's how I that, that's how I met the both of them. They're both really nice to work with. Um, they're both very generous with with advice or with any curiosity I might have with in terms of like maybe what's it like working internationally, for example, um, acting, etc. <laughs> so, what what was it like to shoot your first international film in uh, Dublin, Ireland? And first of all, what dates? How many weeks or months did it take? Uh, 
I feel, uh, if I remember correctly, I think I arrived there sometime in Feb, uh, mid Feb, I think, or early Feb of this year, of twenty twenty one. Oh, 2021, okay. 2021. Uh, we sh- I was there for a good six weeks. Uh, we So we shot the, the Ireland scenes there. And then in June of the same year, uh, they flew in to, um, well, the directors, the producers, uh, the director, the producers, and the cinematographer flew in to, and then we shot the, the Philippine leg of the entire shoot and that was like an additional two weeks i think if i'm not mistaken so we wrapped in june of 2021 so it it took about more than a year before uh the whole film was finished and i'm very excited to see it (laughs) Mm -hmm. same here so how has that film experience compared with your experience acting in filipino movies and tv shows ah uh it was a Honestly, the first thing one one of the first things that I noticed was work, the work conditions. As the the work conditions were were I, I'm sure they also have their own complaints there, and because I I I'm not fully knowledgeable of of what it's like really working there. But so far, in my own experience, in those short six weeks, it was it was wonderful. I I I I'd have a good ten hours of work ish. And then by the end of the day, I'd still have time to kind of let go of the character and and come back to myself and be ready for the next day, um, Monday to Friday, like any normal job, Monday to Friday, and then Saturday, Sunday, no work. Um, and I had time to kind of explore the neighborhood. Unfortunately, because it was the pandemic, many of the places were closed. Um, the pubs were closed. So I would... I would just take walks around within the within a five kilometer radius of where I was staying because I that was if I remember that was the that was a pandemic related rule that they had like you can't go beyond five kilometers of where you're staying unless you have a pass that says okay I work farther, um so we were all within that five kilometer radius and that was really just where I <laughs> where I explored on on my um free time, um. But yeah, mostly it was the work conditions and how nice the people were, really. Just very, very warm, actually. Um, and very, they care a lot about each other. <laughs> and um, I, one of the things that I also noticed was um, because they have unions there. So every time there's an, every time uh, the shoot schedule goes over time, they start apologizing apologizing to everybody and i'm like <laughs> okay how long well, why how long have we gone over time and they tell me oh it's it's we've gone over time 15 minutes i'm so sorry chai and i'm like have you tried shooting in the philippines you can keep me for another hour you know um <laughs> <laughs> uh, chai there's already, already a debate on the internet just based on the trailer why yeah. your character speaks with an accent yeah. There's nothing wrong with having an accent. I have an accent. Yeah. What are your thoughts on people making a big deal about your character's accent? Uh, I think they are, um, I think I understand where they're coming from. Um, I am also of the belief that there's nothing wrong with having an accent. I, 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 I myself have an accent. I sometimes even make fun of it. Like we're, but we're so used to making fun of it. Um, and also, uh, with with what little representation we our culture has and our people has in the international scene, especially, um, I think they're coming from a protective space where um, they're tired of seeing our culture be exploited in storytelling, or they're tired of um, uh, of being the uh, of using our accent as a butt of uh, of jokes. One thing I can assure the people, though, is that we are our accent is not a butt of jokes here, and it would it that it would be very uh, incongruent, I think, with the background of the character if I spoke of a, a different kind of English. Um, it was a it was a creative choice uh, based on uh, the collaboration that I had with with Lorcan, with my my co actors, with my producers. Um, even with the friends that I was, I would ask, uh, I would ask their opinions about like, okay, how how might she speak? How might where she, where does she come from? How old is she? You know, based on all of those, led to that choice. Um, but again, um, I am not, I'm not very upset about, I'm not very upset about people making a big deal of it because again, I understand that they're being very protective of 
what little representation we have. So it's quite understandable. It's quite understandable. But I can assure you, we are not the butt of jokes here. It's okay. <laughs> Great answer, Chai. Uh, this year has been a wonderful one for talented actors like you in this film. Dolly De Leon in Triangle of Sadness. And yes. Solomon Cruz in To the North, making uh, breakthrough performances in European films. So can you, mm-hmm. can, you, can you comment on that? And number two, can you also comment on the d- delicious irony that actors like you, Dolly, and Solomon got their big breaks in Europe and not in the Philippines? Aha! <laughs> Interesting. Um, a lot of people uh, have been like, coming to me and saying things like, oh my, oh my God, this is like, this opens doors to like a lot of people, but... I- I don't think I am the one who has done that. I am standing on the shoulders of, like you said, Dolly De Leon, Soliman Cruz, Jack, Jacqueline Jose, who won a Khan, uh, 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 Best Actress Award in, in Khan, and, and Mercedes Cabral, who has done so many um, uh, international films as well. Um, so many other actors and so many other producers who go into co-productions with other countries and open these doors for 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 actors like us. I am standing on their sh- shoulders. Um, uh, to be honest, um, and I think that's 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 all I have to say about that. I'm just really, I'm just really grateful that I am part of. I I get to be a part of that, and I get to enjoy what I what what I have now because of these people that have come before me, these directors, these producers, and these other actors that have come before me, these the the the, the crew that have worked in other international films as well. Um, um, production designers, everybody, you know, writers, etc. So, yeah, um, and and yes, the irony that um that uh, we we get uh, a bit more recognition outside. I think it has a lot to do with the kind of celebrity culture that we have here. Um, it also has a lot to do with. I think it's a long discussion on on let's say colonialism, for example, uh, people's preferences for. Uh, the more Caucasian looking person or maybe the more now the more East Asian looking person because of the 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 um fame of k-pop and j-pop and 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 uh, and similar things um there's a it it's it's saddening I when I started thinking about this many years ago it would make me angry but you know as you grow older you kind of understand uh, better uh, these issues and these topics and it is it is more saddening now than it is angering because it's a it, it's a very it comes from a very pained history um we have a we have a huge collective pain about that we have been made for so many centuries we have been made to dislike ourselves so much so that it seeps into you know, uh, who we favor in terms of actors. So our, our history, our history actually affects us <laughs> um, personally, even in our even in our work. And, and this is because as a people, we have a lot of healing to do. So yeah. <laughs> that's that's so that was another wonderful answer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> where did you grow up being a contestant on Pinot Dream Academy? being part of a trip-hop trio, womb, to landing roles in TV and film, and winning several Best Supporting a- Actress Awards. Yeah, I was born in Cagayan de Oro. I was born and raised there. Um, my, uh, And then I moved to Cebu for college. And then I've lived there um, uh, ever since. Uh, uh, back then, I thought I was going to be a musician. The entire time, I, th- I thought I was going to be a musician, but I had been acting ever since I was a kid, joining theater guilds in school, you know, all of those um, pretty much not formal education. I didn't get formal education for, for acting. And it was really just the workshops, the theater guilds, the community theater groups that I would I would be in. Um, and then the the music groups that the that I was part of. I, I had a band in college and then I had another band, the, the one that you mentioned, uh, Womb. Um, uh we did we did we had a lot of we did a lot of music making back then um never thought i would land in film um i thought i was already satisfied with um 
uh, doing community theater because this was a really good group that I was I was in. It was it was I think a huge part of my I guess I would say cultural awakening or my creative awakening really. Um, and then one of my friends from college made her first film. Uh, this was Miss Bulalakaw, and it was an entry for Cinema One Originals. Uh, she got me to play one of the main support roles. I won an award for it. And I think it just snowballed from there, um, exploring what it's like to act on screen. Um, and it was a good transition because the community theater, the community theater that we did was very intimate. It was, it was some, um, you know, cafes and, uh, and 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 bars and it was improv it was dramatic improv it's comedic improv so the audience would be very near so we, our acting would be very small so it was a good transition from theater to to films acting for film is, is generally smaller um and then people saw my work in miss bulalakao they wanted to get me for another film they uh they saw uh the people from pawina saw that and then they 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 got me to do uh to be part of the ensemble cast for um Pauina. This was, I think, my first Manila project. And it was very memorable. Um, and then after that, Victor Villanueva, who has been a good friend of mine for since since college, um, he did uh Patayna si Jesus. And then yeah, and then it just kind of snowballed from there. And then eventually along the way I decided maybe I should move to Manila. <laughs> it was kind of a crazy, uh, a crazy story behind that. Uh I I had I I was kind of thinking about it already, but I didn't I wasn't really planning on it. Um the people from Patay Nas Jesus were trying to buy me a ticket. Because there were promotional events here that they wanted me to attend, there were some special screenings that they wanted me to to attend because there were talkbacks after, um, regarding my character and regarding the story, um, regarding one representation, etc. Um, and then all of a sudden, I they they asked me when my when I wanted when when I wanted my return ticket to be, and then I just said, um. One way na lang yan. <laughs> One way na lang yan. <laughs> and then that was it. I kind of just dropped everything and and moved here. Um, I was already staying at a place temporarily because of uh, because I was filming Respeto at that time. Um, and so I continued renting at that place until until I moved into a a, a better place, which is here. <laughs> um. And I've been here ever since, since 2017. To clarify first, before I ask my last question, uh, which yeah. college was that? Did you go to? UP Cebu. Okay, great. Yeah. So for my last uh, questions, actually, I'll just put them in one. In one. Uh, wh what's next for you? Will you be traveling soon? And where, as Nocebo will open internationally in November? Oh, well, uh, what's next for me? Actually, my uh, most honest answer to that is we'll see. <laughs> Uh, we will see. I do not know yet where this is going to take me. I'm kind of anxious about it, actually. I've I've kind of been dealing with some, um, you know, fear. <laughs> you know, when good things come, fear also comes along with it. That doesn't mean you're not grateful. I am very grateful about these things, but at the same time, also kind of scared. So I'm um, just kind of bracing for it. Uh, but uh, the film will be screened in Sit Guest Film Festival. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, there was a there's another film festival that I forget the name of in LA. There it's gonna they're gonna screen as well um this coming week. Um and then as far as I know, it's going to open in the theaters in November in the US. I am not I I am uncertain yet when it's going to open here, but if if it's going to be November, maybe shortly after that, we're going to see it here in the Philippines. So yeah. thank you so much uh, for your time. Thank and you. Congratulations, and I hope to see you. Jan, I hope to meet you in person. And first yeah. of all, and also give our regards to Bianca because we met her in Venice. Just with, Yeah. Just with, yeah. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Bianca. Oh, I love, I love Bianca. When it's... Uh, 
uh, when 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 Bianca invites me to audition for things, I usually I usually have a huge feeling that the film's gonna be really good. So. <laughs> So thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you, so you for your time.